Hey everybody, welcome back to the Senators Roundtable here at the Hockey Writers. Uh, today, I'm your host Jacob Billington, as per usual, and I'm joined by Dayton and Paul. Um, so first things first, how you guys doing? How you doing, Dayton? Oh, not too bad. Just you know, it's been a, it's been a warm uh, fall so far, so it's uh, it's been kind of nice to I don't know not be snowed in quite yet. Yeah, we've I, I haven't had any snowfall yet. Uh, it's been about floating around zero degrees here for the past couple of weeks so um a lot of snow coming down but nothing sticking so okay yeah we're we're hit hovering around like five to ten. Oh, really wow saskatoon here so yeah it's it's not bad good stuff how about you paul how you doing good cafe you called uh yarma brow so, you know some, you know some swedish in honor of the Swedish scene tonight, I decided to learn a little bit of Swedish. I probably massacred it. Uh, <laughs> this doesn't, I hope this doesn't air in Stockholm, but uh, that was uh, uh, good evening, Jacob, and I'm fine. Good. I'm impressed. You just learned that today? Well, you'd be surprised what you can pick up on uh, YouTube. You could do brain surgery, you know, you learn brain surgery on that. So I will. I Trust somebody with a neurosurgeon degree, but uh, you you find somebody to do your brain surgery on. <laughs> That'd be scary, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know uh, if there are any Swedish uh, listeners. I suppose I'll get some feedback on my accent. I'm hoping it's hope- a high Stockholm a Stockholm accent. You know, maybe spoken in the Swedish court. I, I don't know. I'll uh if we don't get any comments I'll make sure to find somebody that's Swedish to uh, I'll find somebody I'll even reach out to Eric Carlson if I have to just to get the just to get the note on that um but yeah that's actually a great segue Paul so thank you um first thing we're gonna do is something a little bit fun gave you guys a little bit of homework for today um we're gonna do a bit of a draft so we're gonna do a snake draft so it's just gonna be you two just because throwing three people in here is gonna be a lot um oh that's good I prepared for three so so I'm over prepared. Three people would be a lot. So I'm just going to be the spectator here. Um, but what we're going to do is draft a full starting lineup of Swedes, of former Senator Swedes. So you're going to need three forwards. I'm not going to keep you to left wing, center, right wing. Just three forwards, uh, two defensemen, and a goaltender. Uh, that's pretty much it. So I've got a coin here. I'm going to flip. All right. I didn't decide who was heads or tails. <laughs> Yeah, you probably um, should do that first. Paul, you go ahead. You were you were heads, let's say. Um, so you start first, and then Dayton, you'll have back to back picks, and then Paul, you'll have back to back, and so on until we have our full teams. Okay, so they've got to be former senators, right? I can't go out there and grab a current day Swede anywhere. No, no Victor Hedman, no no Lidstrom. Damn, damn! I had a dream team put together there. Um, <laughs> So, hmm, left wing? I don't know. Why don't I take uh, Andreas Dackel? There's a blast oh. from the past. All right. Yeah, that's a good pick. Uh, but it's left me with two fantastic ones. So I'm going to take Daniel Alfredson and Eric Carlson. There you go. All right, Paul, now you get your two picks. Two picks. Daniel Alfredson and Eric Carlson. Um. Well, Mika's is a Banajad. Yep. Mm, yep. And uh, I don't know, Magnus Arvidsson. Nice. I like the names. I really like. Like, I wouldn't even have thought of these guys and just some of the names. That's why I love stuff about this. All right, Dayton. So you got uh, forward and defense. Yeah. Um. Let me think here. Uh. Let's go. Jacob or is it Jakob? Jakob Silverberg. Yeah, played a little bit with the uh, the Senators. Um, and why don't I grab my goalie, Robin Leonard? Ooh, I like that one. I didn't think of that one. I didn't do my homework because I didn't have to, <laughs> but <laughs> I didn't think of that one. All right, Paul, you get a pair of uh, pair of picks here. Well, I better grab a goalie right off the top. So I'll take uh, Philip Gustafson, which Ooh, will like uh, 
you know, reopened wounds in the Ottawa fan base. You know, he left town and flourished uh, yep. as soon as he left town in Minnesota. So there's my goaltender, a defenseman. Well, Carlson, did you? Well, you grabbed him, Dayton, didn't you? I did, yeah. Jeez. Man. Um, I'm stumped. I, I, uh, you know, I was looking at this, this is current Swede. So I'm, uh, I don't know, throw me a bone here, Dayton. Give me a couple of picks you don't want. <laughs> well, what are you looking for? Are you looking for forward or defense or both? Defense. Well, current uh, Swede, Eric Brandstrom, he's on the team right now. Yeah. I don't, sure. know, I don't know if you want to take him. Um, Johnny Oduya, he's a Swede. Is he? I thought he was Canadian. Hmm. Uh, no, well, elite prospects list him as a full Swede. Maybe he is a Swede. I believe he played his um, his minor hockey in Sweden. Huh. I could be wrong. No, you're right. Huh. Yeah, doesn't have a very, what we expect is a Swedish name, but. Yeah. yeah. Um, Oli Alsing. Alsing, yeah. Yeah, played a few Alsing. games. <laughs> you take your pick, Paul. Oscar Lindberg. Yeah, I'll take Lindberg and, and Elsing, I guess. <laughs> okay. All right. So then it's just my two picks to finish it up. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um... Let's go with a winger to start. Uh, Andreas Johansson played 69 games with the Ottawa Senators in 98-99. Put up 37 nice. points, 21 goals. Pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, played a little bit with Calgary, Tampa, Nashville, New York. Kind of bounced around, but his career high was in Ottawa. So I think that's 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 a good sign, you know? Very good sign. Um, and I'm going to take Johnny Oduya, unless uh, Paul already took him. Nope, he took Lindbergh and Olsen. So Fantastic. Um, leave your thoughts on who ends up with the better team um, in the comments, and we're going to throw a poll up as well. Um, so be sure to go vote on that and share that around. Um, but yeah, that's pretty fun. Obviously, we did this because Ottawa is going to be in um, Sweden for their next two games. It's going to be quite exciting. Um, it's quite frankly, this is where the rebuild started. This is where everything went downhill for Ottawa. Time to turn it around, like time to man up time to um, it was actually, I think it was Ian Mendez did an article today and said that the senators are strictly on a business trip here. Like they are ready to turn things around. Um, so what better place to do it than where the rebuild started? Obviously in 2018, they played against the Colorado avalanche and Maybe somebody else. Maybe they only had the one game. Oh, no, they had back-to-back -back against the Avalanche um, over in Sweden. Now they're there off to a miserable start to the season, to put it quite frankly. How important is it for the Senators to come out with success, whatever that looks like? And what does that look like to you? We'll start with you, Dayton. How important is it to come out of Sweden with success? Yes. And what do you define as success? Yes. That's, yeah, um, I think it's really important. I think this is, of course, yeah, it's just a, you know, a trip overseas. It's a, one of those, you know, special occasion games. Normally, that's not that big of a deal. Yeah. But I think for the Senators, there is this, this symbolic, this historical significance to it. And I think if they can come out with, more wins than losses. I think it's three games, isn't it? Uh, Ottawa only plays two. Is it only two? Okay. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, they need at least one win. Yeah. And I think if they're going to lose another one, it has to be close. And I think that would be a a solid place to start. But yeah, it needs to be a successful trip. There needs to be at least a one win, hopefully two wins, to try to get this maybe for a lack of a better term, monkey off their back, that has been plaguing them for, honestly, like the last seven years. And I think I think if a, there's a strong showing at Sweden, then I think they can start to rest a little easier and start to 
figure themselves out a bit. Yeah, I I completely agree. Paul, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with Dayton. I mean, it's critical. Um, you know, if I take a look at their last three games, look, they've they've beaten the two teams that they should have beaten, the Leafs and Calgary. And that's not something they were doing earlier in the season. They just uh, weren't beating the teams that they, they should have been expected to beat. Um, they need to continue that momentum. So, you know, if they can walk out with uh, one win in Sweden, uh, then, you know, if you take a look at what will have been their last five games, um, they'll have won three and meaning that they're playing 600. And so that's the, that's the pace that they're going to have to play. If they've got any hope of making the playoffs between, you know, they got to play 600 from now on. So one win would put them on that track. You know what? Two wins, and it'll be tough because they're playing Detroit, one of the hottest teams in the league. Uh, that would be a stellar result, goes without saying. Uh, and it would put them at 533 if if you looked at their entire 15 games that they played to that point in the season. So, you know, the flip side of that coin is drop those two games. It's going to be ugly. And there's – going to be some people leaving the organization i would think you know you drop these two games man you're a, you really are a bottom dweller and you're a 400 hockey club you'd probably be one of the worst teams in the league to this point so you know that's what they're faced with uh heading into sweden these are two really important games for them yeah and it's it's crazy to think that just two games like two games means nothing in the in the nhl season but these two they're a special time um, over in Sweden. They're at a very important part of the Ottawa Senators season. Like this couldn't come at more of a make it or break it time in the season. Like this is, this is it. I mean, other than the last two games, if they're pushing for a playoff spot and they need four points, um, this is probably the most important time to make or break a season for Ottawa. Now I think success looks like three points. I don't think a close game is good enough. Like you two mentioned, um, a, a close game being an overtime loss, that's okay. But a close game as in a 3-1 game with an empty net goal, that's not good enough. No moral victories. A close game isn't good enough. Um, I think they need three points to really make a statement here. Um, yeah, that's just my thoughts. Like, it's it's incredibly important for them to have success over in Sweden. And you look at the Swedish history of this team. Like, we just named some fantastic names. Um Daniel Alfredson's over there with them. Eric Carlson obviously is the most talented player to ever play for the team. Like Ottawa has a lot of Swedish roots. Okay. And they're only 30 years old. They're, I believe there's 36 players to ever play for Ottawa from Sweden. Um, that's, that's a good bit. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's important morally. And I, I know I just said no moral victories, but um, just for, for the vibes, I guess but as well as to save the season. Oh, yeah. they. I mean, they've got to beat somebody up over there. I'm assuming they can beat up the uh, the uh, hapless uh, Wild. Detroit's going to be tough. Um, you mentioned the Swedish roots of Ottawa. and This, I, this goes back a long time ago, but I, the explanation I heard, I don't know if it's still true, was that uh, Ottawa had a lot of scouting, most of its European scouting in the Nordic countries, and in particular Sweden. Uh, is that still true? They do have a lot of scouts over there, um, and Rutu is like the head scout of Europe. Um, so, yeah, I I don't know the ratio or whatnot, but I do know that they have a lot of European scouts and that the Senators traditionally love their Europeans. Mm. Mm -hmm. So... I'm going to kind of rewind to some of the points that you made, Paul. You said there's a chance that some people leave here without a job. Um, now, are they going to get fired in Sweden? No, that's a very long cab ride home. Um, but this trip might cost them a job um, and inferring DJ Smith. And then you also talked about how they're going to be one of the bottom teams in the league, a la Edmonton Oilers. Jay Woodcroft just got fired. Um, and Chris Knobloch just got hired. You ask me, Jay Woodcroft was not the issue in Edmonton. It was the fact that they don't have good defensemen. 
they don't have good goaltending and they don't have a healthy Connor McDavid that dominates the league. What do you expect Jay Woodcroft to do there? DJ Smith, sure, has a couple injured defensemen. Sure, had some struggles in the net so far this year. It's been more than just the 100 games like Jay Woodcroft has coached. It has been traditional for DJ Smith and the Ottawa Senators to struggle out of the gate. Here we go again. Um, So I'm not just looking for DJ Smith to be the answer here, but who do you think is the next coach fired in the NHL? We'll start with you on this one, Paul. Well, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, It's DJ. If he, uh, if he doesn't do well in Sweden, Um, but to your point on teams that aren't doing well, um, you'd, you'd have to include Mike Sullivan with Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, sure, he's won some cups there, but the fact is they were off to a horrible start uh, this year. Uh, they didn't make the playoffs last year. So you've got to think unless he can stabilize it. And, you know, it does look like he's he's starting to stabilize it. They're a little above 500 now. But, you know, he'd be on the list of uh, people uh, – Needing a cab ride out of Pittsburgh. Um, the other guy I would identify as vulnerable is um, Sheldon Keefe. Um, you know, the Leafs were off to a dreadful start this year. And now they're at, what is it, 8, 5, and 2, uh, barely above 500. Um, that said, if you can believe it, they're still tied for third spot. Um, so they're by no means out of contention here. But, it, you know, if they don't start playing up to their potential, you know, I think back to early in the season when people were predicting that they were going to win the uh, Atlantic division, uh, bookies were giving them great odds of winning a Stanley Cup. If they don't start approaching that level of play, uh, I think Trill Living's got to be thinking about uh, how long Keith uh, stays in that position. You know, you got to remember, he's only won one series in four four years. So. Yeah. He's on thin ice. Yeah. I I like that one. I because I Sheldon Keefe is up there for me too. And it's not just the win and loss record. It is his deployment of John Klingberg that continues to destroy the Leafs. Like that's that's miserable. Um the fact that it took what was it, 13 games for Ryan Reeves to get scratched should have been after game four. Like, I don't know. I disagree with some of his decisions. Plenty of Leafs fans also this or also disagree with his decisions um so this isn't just a bunch of senators guys coming after the Leafs. so don't radio us um but yeah who, who do you think dayton who's on the hottest seat right now i think i think i agree with saying dj smith is on the hottest seat yeah because if he puts two losses together in sweden he's he's getting his his pink slip when he gets home I think it's going to be pretty much that quick Um, because of this trip is super important for the senators. If he does win it though, he's probably good for the rest of the season. Uh, Seems like management likes him. Seems like the players really like him. There's no reason to get rid of a guy who has, you know, he has control of the room. Just maybe his, his decisions aren't the best depending on how you look at it. A guy I would be worried for is Dean Evason in Minnesota. You took mine. Well, Paul took uh, Mike Sullivan from me. So, (laughs) and you took Alfredson from me in the, in the draft. So it all comes around. God, nobody's playing. (laughs) You you took Dackle first overall. So that's, that was, that was a dumb move. I admit (laughs) it's my, it's, you know, it's my first fantasy draft. What do I know? You know, there we'll you do go. some better ones in the future then. No, I, yeah. I learned something here tonight. <laughs> yeah. Minnesota has been a good team for a long time. Uh, you know, ever since Kaprizov got there and they are not performing how they should. They already dumped um, Kalen Addison. That was a surprising trade. I didn't I didn't see them getting rid of that young defenseman. He's I really like him. He's he's a great player. Um yeah, no, Minnesota's sitting sixth in, in the central. 
They've got a minus 14 goal differential. Like without the playoff success, he's very similar to Sheldon Keefe, right? Yeah. He hasn't won when it's come to crunch time. Yeah. And now that this the wild are starting to slip, I, I don't know. I think I think he would have a pretty short leash right now. Yeah, I I mean I I don't even have another name just to throw out there for fun. Um you two kind of hit the nail on the head with all of your kind of well, I don't know. Well, what I mean, about what do you think of Craig Bay Rube? Is he on thin ice down there in St. Louis or no? I don't like... think so. Um maybe, but I do I do think that um I do think he's sticking around. St. Louis loves him. The city, the team, the ownership, the management, everybody loves him. Nobody wants him gone. Um, and he's shown that he knows how to he he can win with that team. He just doesn't have a good enough team in front of him. Like he's got the senior citizens of the tough NHL defensemen for his top six. Like it's they're all in their thirties on long, expensive contracts and on the decline. Like there's so many things to point fingers at other than coaching there, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that they do make a change and think that they, they can be better than that. So I don't know. I'm not uptight with the uh, St. Louis market, but maybe we'll have to, have to wait and see what happens there. Yeah, I'll throw you one more name. Um, I This one I don't think is super likely, but Ryan Huska in Calgary. Because Calgary's been straight up awful. Yep. And they need to decide what they're going to do for the rest of the season. Are they going to try to actually make the playoffs? Because yep. they have the talent to do it. They do not have the execution right now. So sometimes a coaching change can fix that. He's only been there for a, like less than a year, though. Like, wasn't he hired at the beginning of this season? Yeah, like he's only been there 15 games. Exactly. Yeah, like if if the Flames really want to push for the playoffs, they might dump him. Um, but if they're going to decide, okay, we need to retool, which they should. Yes. They need to. They've needed to for, I don't know, five years. Yeah. Then... Huska stays because he's been a minor league coach for years and you know he knows how to work with the kids yeah well and we've we've seen that before like even just a couple years ago before chicago admitted they were bad they hired um jeremy something oh mm -hmm. i can't remember his name that's gonna bother me so much um uh was it colleton yes jeremy colleton that just came to me as you said um uh yes jeremy calls and they fired him as quick as he got hired uh it did not take long and then they got a new coach and realized maybe we are just kind of crap so maybe florida or um calgary does the same thing and i i do like that one as well and another name i'll just throw out there for fun um is david quinn i don't imagine they want to make a change management is probably rubbing their hands together looking at macklin celebrini and saying look at look what we're gonna get um and if not, we get Cole Iserman or whoever. I don't imagine they make a change right now. They're getting exactly what they want. But at some point, you have to keep the butts in the seats and win a couple games. I don't know. A couple. Of, you know what? I'll even throw Lane Lambert out there. There's a lot more than I kind of thought when we started this conversation. Um, the Islanders are not doing good. Mediocrity as per usual. Um, yeah. Just all that stuff. And it's going on a lot of places around the league. But, you know, you guys were, uh, I guess I'm getting a bit off course here, but you were mentioning rebuilds and, um, you know, I hate them. I, I mean, it's just, uh, I know teams do it, but it's risky. I mean, if you look at uh, Buffalo, what have they been in rebuilding for 10 years? Ottawa's not far behind. What have we been, Ottawa's been rebuilding since 17. Uh, they they can go sideways on you, you know, if you blow the team up and, you uh, it's a long, long way back to heaven. Yeah. Well, I think there's a, a big difference between a uh, a planned rebuild and a forced rebuild. Mm. I think yeah. Buffalo and Ottawa were forced to rebuild because their teams imploded upon them. Um, whereas like the New York Rangers planned a little bit of a rebuild and yeah. I don't know, missed the playoffs two years and then we're back. Yeah. Same as the LA Kings. Yeah. I kind of just said. Hang on, let's suck for a little bit and get Quentin Byfield and Alex Turcott. Mind you, that didn't work out very well so far. Um, yeah, I think he still. Yet. I think he still can do it. 
I, I think so. I'm not writing them off yet. Um, but yeah, the, I do think that there's a big difference. When you get forced, you're like, uh-oh, and everybody in the league knows you're forced, and all of a sudden you're trading Mark Stone for Eric Branstrom and Igor Sokolov. <laughs> That's yep. – it happens. Yeah, um, and I think the Flames are pretty much there. Yeah, and trading Sean Monahan along with their 2025 first-round pick is not very helpful. <laughs> oh, does it, that look bad okay. now? Yeah. I mean, look at Monahan. He's come to he's come back to life. Yeah. He's looking uh, fantastic in Montreal and I'm really happy for him. I think we talked about that last week. Um, or might have been on the Fantasy Four Check podcast, I'm not sure. Um, but I did say that some point in the last week, and I'm really happy for Monahan. Obviously, for somebody that has a Ottawa jersey in the background of the podcast, I can't say much about Montreal, but I'm happy for Monahan. Okay, is uh former Ottawa sixty seven Monahan. Yeah, let's let's right, yeah. link it that way. That's that's why I'm cheering for him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to take a quick break, uh, and we'll be right back to talk a little bit about the defensive group and wrap things up. All right, welcome back, everybody. Now, before we get into uh, all the other things we're going to talk about, I just want to say to go check out the Ottawa Senators Substack hosted by the Hockey Writers. Um, there will be a link down in the description, and we've started to offer this premium content for everybody. Um, so we offer free and premium subscriptions. Uh, for the free, you just get all the articles sent into your inbox every week uh, on Tuesdays and Fridays. And for the premium subscription, you get a lot more things. You get the pregame previews, everything you need to know about the game before you head into it. Um, you're going to get mailbags. You're going to get live chats during the game. A whole bunch of stuff. So go check that out down below. You can have a seven-day free trial. Uh, you can share the link. Uh, you get a custom link to share with people. And if you get five subscribers gained from that, then you get your own free subscription for a month. Uh, so a lot of great things going on there. So go check that out in the description. So now that we got that out of the way, uh, let's talk some defense. So Artem Zub, not practicing. Um, Thomas Shabbat still out for another three to five weeks at this point, maybe. Um, a, lot, a lot of stuff going on there. Eric Brandstrom, he's back. He looks all right. Um, I do just want to give my thoughts on Zub for a second. So obviously he took a shot uh, right to the ear from Alex Ovechkin. Definitely did not feel good. Had a concussion, missed eight games or so. Um, and then there was a collision with him and Vladimir Tarasenko. And he left the game two minutes, three minutes left or so um, in Ottawa's last game. And then got on a flight, which is not usually good for any brain issues. Um, so I'm a little bit skeptical about that, especially because he's not practicing today. Uh, now, is it another concussion issue? I'm not sure. He might have hurt his shoulder when he bumped into Tarasenko and just came on the trip anyway. I don't know. Nobody's really released any information about that yet. The team has kind of stayed quiet on that. But if it is another head issue, sending him on a plane to Sweden, I, that's not acceptable. And Ottawa do, does have a new head of medical staff. Um, and he is very highly touted around the league. So I don't imagine that that's the case if it was more concussion issues that they throw him right on a plane. But I don't know. Anyway, what does Ottawa need to do about the defense? Because right now, Jacob Larson was called up. Now, mind you, that's probably just for, hey, we're going to Sweden. Come along with us because you're Swedish. Um, but you got Jacob Bernard Docker, um, Tyler Clevin, who hasn't looked fantastic this year, I'll be honest. Um, a lot of guys that shouldn't be NHL regulars right now, or don't look like they should be. Um, even though I will fully admit, I preach Jacob Bernard Docker in the NHL. He does not look like he belongs there right now. Um, but yeah, does Ottawa need to make a move? What do you, what do you think Dayton? If Zub is out long-term, yeah, they got to do something because while these young guys are like they got lots of potential. They just haven't been showing it this year. And I think on a team that really wants to make the playoffs, you can't rely on half of your defense being inexperienced like the senators have right now. It's a, it's a nasty situation. So if Zub is out for any extended amount of time, like he's out two weeks, you've got to start considering making a move. Yeah. And then were we, planning on talking about who's that going to be or yeah who would you bring in okay 
just making sure I'm not stealing any thunder. So, <laughs> um, Nikita Zadorov has shown up in a lot of um, uh, trade rumors because he asked for a trade right in the middle of a game. Yeah. Uh, he wants out of Calgary. I do not blame him. Yeah, uh, it's it's a tire fire over there. He would honestly be a fantastic fit for Edmonton. Edmonton. Oh my goodness, uh, <laughs> Ottawa. Not. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Tired, maybe it might be a good fit for Edmonton too. Honestly, now that you mentioned yeah, it, yeah, honestly, yeah, they're also a tire fire. Yes, for different reasons. Um, so yeah, Nikita Zadorov would be great in Ottawa. Yeah, he is. I believe he's right-handed. He plays a two-way game, much like Zub. He's got a decent contract. It's under four million, and I think it's only for a year or two. It's up think... this year. Is it okay? I couldn't remember. I looked at a lot of defensemen and they started getting jumbled. Um, but there are a few other guys that I'd look at. But we mentioned rebuilds earlier. Um, I think Calgary's headed towards one. Yep. Why not try to go for Chris Tanev? Yep. He's a very good defensive presence. He fills in that gap really nicely. He's only got signed for one more year. It is more expensive at 4.5. And he has a 10-team no-trade clause. He's a UFA makes... this year too. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that what I, I said? Thought, I thought you meant one more year after this year. But yeah. No, this is his yeah. last year. Yeah. Um, so he fits the the bill as well. I think he's also right-handed. If not, he plays both sides. Yeah. Um, and as far as I remember, Zub is also a righty. Yes. Yes. Okay. Just there's too many names in my head. Um there's also uh we mentioned Pittsburgh, Mike Sullivan. Um, they're old and not trending in the right direction. People have been saying it for years. If you have Crosby and Malkin and Latang, you have to go for it. Yeah. And they still do. And now they have Carlson. So yeah. it's very likely they're still going to go for it. But every if everything falls apart, why not try to grab uh, Pedersen? Thought you were going to say Carlson. <laughs> He is fantastic, but way too much money. And that would cost the team way more than they should pay. Yeah. Great story to have him return under the new ownership. Yeah. But it's it's not happening. No. Um, Pedersen, though. Yeah. There's another two-way guy. He's done very well with um, limited role and yeah. slowly kind of crawled his way up the depth chart in Pittsburgh. He's just at four million. He has another year after this year, but again, also that modified no train no trade clause, but only eight teams this time. Yeah. One more guy for you. I did my research. Um, Ilya Labushkin. Ooh, okay. Yeah. So Anaheim, they're doing okay right now. They're gonna start selling guys. Yeah, probably. That's they're in the middle of their their rebuild. So. They're going to sell them for picks and they've got lots of cap space. They're going to take on money. Yeah. You know, maybe a partner for the senators who have no money. Yeah. And Labushkin only takes 2.75 million for this year and then he's out. Yeah. So that's a good situation. He's a defensive minded guy. He he's pretty quiet. I like I you never talk about him because he doesn't put up points. But people keep bringing him into their teams because he seems to do a pretty bang up job. And so he might be a guy to solidify that bottom six, bottom four uh, for Ottawa's defense. So those those are the three guys that I would target after Zadorov. Yeah. And you know what? I like Labushkin. I really like Labushkin in Toronto. Um, once he went to Buffalo and now Anaheim, he's been a lot quiet. I mean, the Toronto media shows you all the good highlights. You're not going to see all these big highlights out of Buffalo and Anaheim. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll be honest, I don't watch 82 Anaheim Ducks games every year. Um, but yeah, I, I quite like Labushkin and what he can be. So that's, that's a good sneaky one to throw in there. Paul, what do you think of, I guess we have to rewind quite a bit, but what do you think of the whole Ottawa's defense situation right now? I know that you were already um, a little bit lower on the defensive group um, than most people. And now mm -hmm. they're missing Shabbat and Zub. 
Yeah, well, I, you know, I think, uh, you know, Dayton hit the nail on the head. Ottawa needs a good right shot defenseman. And I wrote a piece today. Uh, I was roundly condemned for it by many here in Ottawa, but uh, it argued that, you know, what they should do is uh, package up um, Matthew Joseph and uh, Brandstrom and go out and buy one. Uh, yeah. But then, you know, the, we go back to the, the essential question here is, all right, who? And it's, you know, this this just isn't fantasy hockey here. You can't go to the magic trayer player tree and grab one off the tree. You've got to have a trade partner. And, uh, you know, a whole lot of things have to have to come into place. Now, with Zadorov, uh, sure, he wants out of Calgary. Would I grab him if I were the GM? Um, well, he, you know, he, he can play the right side. In fact, he, he can play, uh, both left and right six, six, huge 235 pounds. The problem is, um, you know, there's competition there. Rumor has it that the Leafs are in serious discussions for him. Uh, Vancouver is as well. Uh, so, and the New Jersey, Jersey Devils, there's, there's another club that's interested in his services, and Ottawa's problem is the cap, right? Uh, they just don't have any money. So Zadorov is going to cost you like $3.7 million. Yeah. I don't know where that's going to come from. It, it you, you might clear it. Well, you would clear it with uh, Joseph and Brandstrom. Uh, but then the question is, you know, I was talking earlier about finding the right trade partner with Calgary. Uh Sure, it looks like they're in a rebuild, and they'll they'll be looking for picks and prospects. So, I don't know what Ottawa could offer in that department that would be of enough interest that they they seriously engage with Ottawa in a discussion around Zadorov. So, um, all of that to say, I don't know. It's like there just are not a lot of defensemen out there, good right shot defensemen that you can go out and grab. I mean, we, you can sit here and say, hey, wouldn't it be wonderful of this or that? But um, it's a tough, tough world out there that Ottawa competes in. Well, I'm bringing in $4 million. Again, you you have to move the money out, money in, money out, because Shabbat and Zub are not gone forever. They're coming back, and their cap hits will be right back with them. Um, actually, Zub is not even on IR. He's just kind of a, a unhealthy scratch right now. Um, Shabbat obviously on LTIR. Um, but yeah, it's got to be a money in, money out situation, even though right now you have eight million dollars freed up, that's coming right back to you. So it's really interesting to see kind of what Ottawa will do. Um, because I think nothing is off the table. It's been reported by Bruce Garriock, Elliot Friedman, um, quite a few people that Ottawa is looking for a defenseman, but money still stands to be the issue. So like if they look at Zadorov and let's say that they send Brandstrom over um, and a second round pick, I don't, I, I don't have Ottawa's pick right in front of me, but a second round pick um, for 50% retained, like how much is that going to cost you? And then what's it going to cost you to get a double retained? Like, is it worth spending all of that to get Zadorov at under a million? I don't know. That's up for Steve Steos to figure out, but that's something that I have seen thrown around and, not a not a terrible idea. It's going to cost you a lot, but yeah, you need you need to win right now. You're going to lose the fan base. The new owner is going to lose the fan base already. If like if Ottawa stinks again this year, in Michael Anlauer's first year, he's not going to be very happy. He wants to win. Yeah, win, win. Would you qualify that though a bit, a bit Jacob? Uh, I mean, they're obviously not. You know, when you say win, you're probably a, a, a playoff series it would be great if they if they could do that. They've got to be in the playoff hunt until yeah. the last two games of the season. Anything else is a failure of a season. Yeah, because I, I you know, I often think, look, uh, you're not going to win a cup this year. Not you're not going to come close. Um, so. In a sense, you're still in a bit of a rebuild here. So, you know, you can balance off the need to uh, achieve something this season, right? Like making the playoffs with adding the talent that you need. Um, you know, I, I, I still think Tarasenko, for example, is a head scratcher. I mean, uh, 
sure, if you're making a cup run, it'd be nice to have them. But if an opportunity came along to move them in return for some pieces that you need for long-term success, I'd do that. I mean, I wouldn't take any anything off the table. Um, uh, you know, I'm kind of laughing today when I, you know, I got some comments on the article and it was, no, no, you can't move uh, Joseph. You're crazy. He's, uh, he's doing so well, but look, he's not going to keep on doing that well. You know, he was never a top six player and Hey, his trade value is pretty high now. Maybe yeah. you do move him. And uh, you know, if you look, if you if you didn't have them, I don't think it's going to make or break your season. But again, it depends on what you define success as. If it's making the playoffs, maybe winning a series, okay. You know. So the only thing I'll challenge you on that is, why can't he keep this up? Why can't Matthew Joseph keep up the seventy point pace? Well, I'm looking at his. His past, you know, he was never, he played most of his career in Tampa I and mean, he was never a top six down there. Although I will grant you that that was a Stanley Cup championship team. Uh, so it would be difficult for him to make the top six, but he was inconsistent. Um, I think when you get uh, Ridley Greed back and Pinto on, I don't know that there's going to be you know, he would remain in the top six. I think now what's he playing uh, alongside Giroux and Stutzla? Yep. Hell, I could probably look good if I was playing with those guys. But, uh, you know, I, I just don't think he's – and the league's going to get tougher. You know, as we get into American Thanksgiving and Christmas, uh, things are really going to tighten up. Um, so I'm – I. He might keep it up, but uh, he, you know he's not a point up point a game uh, player. I think he's got what thir- twelve points in thirteen games. Yep, that kind of production he won't keep up. So I I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just for the sake of playing the devil's advocate. May I raise you one Carter Verhage? Until he was twenty four, he was an AHL even an ECHL guy, um, and he just. He was not good. All of a sudden, he's a forty point uh, or forty goal, eighty point scorer. Um, that's just what he is now. And I'll also raise you a Frank Vetrano. I just pulled up Vetrano's stats. His career high before last year was thirty four points, thirty nine points. Pretty on pace with what you'd expect from Joseph. He had forty one last year, and he's got eleven goals in fourteen games this year. Now a bit of an alarm. An- bit of an anomaly he's not going to score 60 goals this year but sometimes you just get these late bloomers um do i think that matthew joseph will be a 40 goal scorer absolutely not do i think he'll be a point per game player absolutely not but who am i to decide that that's that's the point i make. like i'm not disagreeing with you sell high if you can like if you get a really good offer um he's not going to keep up a point per game pace unless he does yeah yeah and you you talk about their past right um before he was in tampa he was a pretty uh like high-end junior scorer um he was leading or pretty close to leading uh the saint john sea dogs in goals uh in his last year with them he had 36 and 54 games so that's that's a talented goal scorer and then in the playoffs he put up 32 points in 18 games that's that's somebody who knows his way around the puck. So yeah, maybe he is a bit of a late bloomer. And I think the senators can gamble this year. Yeah. They like, finally the senators don't have to sell guys at the deadline just to recoup a little bit of value. Like they, they can wait this one out. I think they can see, well, is he actually going to retain that pace? If he's not, well, fine. We had a really good run when with him in the top six, but if he does, they they can afford to I think gamble that this season for the first time in a long time. Yeah, unless yeah. you're getting your Ryan Dezingle return of Anthony Duclair and two second round picks, I wouldn't I wouldn't move him. Even then, I don't know if I'd move him for I don't know who's a good Anthony Duclair example right now. In what regard? Like value wise for when he was traded to Ottawa, like who who. 
who's a similar player to that value? Oof. Um, I can't think of one off the top of my no, head. No, I got nothing right now. But like, he was a prospect with potential. I might say like Arthur Kaliev, kind of, but okay. not quite. Um, a little, little bit under Kaliev. Um, and two second round picks for Matthew Joseph. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, that's a decent. If you can get something like that, or even like the Peugeot trade, right? A first and a yeah. second round pick. Yeah. That's, and that's how you get Ridley Gregg. And was it Tyler Clevin with that too? Mm, yes. It was the second round pick was traded with a third round pick to Toronto for Tyler Clevin. Yes. So it was counts. Kobe counts. Niemela and Rony Hirovin and for Tyler Clevin. All those picks were swapped. Right. That's less fun to look at. <laughs> I think those are really good guys. And I remember writing and looking at them when that draft was happening. And yeah, mm, that's all I'll say at this time. Yes. Niemel is not off to a great start this year. He hasn't looked fantastic. Fingers crossed that that doesn't bite Ottawa eventually. Um, but all the best to him. Um, all right. Uh, either of you have anything else you wanted to add for today? We went off on a bit of a tangent on Matthew Joseph for a while, but um, yeah. Is there anything else either of you wanted to talk about? No, no. A uh, couple of interesting games. Uh, I guess Saturday is going to be a great day, right? You can wake up in the morning, have breakfast. The Sens will be on at 11. You can move into the uh, 11 a.m. You can move into the afternoon game and you can watch tw- 12 hours of hockey. Yeah. Wow. Is it 11 Eastern? I thought it was 11 Atlantic, but maybe it's noon Atlantic. I don't know. Morning game. It's all that matters. I don't know. I'm, using, I'm using Saskatchewan as my uh, reference point in Canada now. They're like GMT <laughs> for Canadians. Yeah. Yeah. As you should. It's the, it is the reference point. <laughs> yes, it is what the whole world revolves around Saskatchewan's time zone. Center of the country. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it. Yeah. Which is the one time zone that never changes. You, you are correct. You are correct. And we should all envy that. Um, stupid daylight savings. <laughs> um, anyway, let's talk about the SPCA for a bit. No. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. The cat's not uh, not joining me anymore. Must be uh, you guys scared him off, I guess. Are, are, are we not paying him enough? That's that's could be the problem. You got to oh, talk 100 percent. We're not paying him enough. <laughs> Can't His demands him. are way too high. <laughs> Typical cat. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that'll wrap up for today. Um, thank you all for joining and checking out this episode. Um, like I said, go check out the sub stack down in the description. Um, if you have any questions for next time, leave them down in the comments and we'll be sure to get to them all. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Take care, everyone.